Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today, we have got a rather nice pairing video of our Chilabrachis species Electric Blue. Now, um, this is a spider from um, Thailand, and it's sometimes referred to as the poor man's biroots. And this is because the front legs of the Electric Blue as are they as a, as it's described electric blue running right the way down going into like a nice violet color and it is absolutely stunning these really are really impressive spiders and they get fairly big as well um our male is probably a good six and a half inches or so um our female is a little bit smaller and these are only young spiders so um fingers crossed everything will work out fine now um Check out the video. I mean, the male is extremely flighty. Now, we have paired him with one of our other females, and we had the same response from him. So, as we try and move him from his enclosure into her enclosure, he becomes very, very jumpy, and um, he literally just bolts out, and um, he just goes for it. He literally just goes for it. So, we have to really take our time when we have spiders like these to actually calm them down and get them into the right frame of mind for the job in hand rather than being afraid and looking to escape all the time so you'll see a little bit of that as we um as we enter him into the enclosure and uh, and you'll see his response it's quite erratic to say the least anyway sit back and have a look at this it is some really really beautiful footage I will see you soon, guys. Well, that was the introduction of our male Chilabrachis electric species, electric blue. And um, as you saw there, he literally exited his enclosure and bounced into hers. You remember when we pair our spiders, we always introduce the male to the female. Now we found with um, with this particular male anyway that uh, he is very flighty, very nervous, um, and he just doesn't like being handled in any way. And you can see the entrance to her burrow there. Now these guys come from Thailand, and um, they get their name from the colouring on the front legs. And as you can see there, this is where they get their name, the electric blue. They're a very, very stunning spider and quite a large spider as well. This guy here, he's a good six and a half, maybe seven inches. They do grow relatively big. You can see that lovely blue in the lower part of the leg there moving on to almost like an electric violet colour. Really, really nice. You can clearly see the emboli there on the end of the pedipalps. That shiny piece on the end there. That is the emboli, and you can just about make out the long, thin arm of the emboli running up the inside of that leg, well, on, on that pedipalp, sorry. You can just about make it out, that dark line. As we said, that colouring so exquisite. Now, as we were saying, we um, we always take our male and introduce him to the female's enclosure. This is very important. And um, with these guys that are very flighty, like this particular male, it's important that we take our time. We have to be very, very gentle. He's actually on the wander out now. He's, he'd rather leave rather than stay. So what we're doing is we are just gently trying to coax him back then. We don't want him to run off at, at any kind of pace. We want him to do everything slow and methodical. And one of the reasons for this is if he runs across the front of her burrow or something like that, she may well just charge out and grab him. So it's very, very important that he moves around the enclosure at his own pace. 
You can see a little bit of that colouring in the top of the fangs there. Fantastic looking spiders. Now this guy has actually been um, paired with one of our other females already. And we found that the beginning is very, very jumpy. Once he, he meets her, then everything changes. Now then, you can see the, um, the entrance to her burrow there. Notice that it's all webbed up. Now many might think that this is because that is in pre-molt or something like that. This is not the case. You'll notice that the webbing is very fine. If this spider was in pre-molt, that would be much heavier webbing over the entrance to the burrow. And many of the chillabrachis will web the entrance to their burrows over in the daytime, where they tuck down. Come evening, they will open it up and uh, look for food and things like that. There we go, that lovely blue and violet colour on the legs there. Very, very clear. We have got no extra lighting on these spiders. This is purely just the uh, the light on in the in the room inside the uh, in the beastie room. Look at that, absolutely exquisite, beautiful. You clearly see the eyes on the spider there. Lovely close up of these males. Now then. It took him a little while, but what you'll see in here is pretty much in real time. Now he's on the floor now, so he should be picking up pheromones from the... Yeah, look, she's out. She would have heard him bounce into the enclosure straight away. Notice the banding on the male's legs. Whoa! That was quite the introduction. You notice now how he is actually throbbing. He's starting to wave. The chillabrachis are very, very... Uh, prone to waving their pedipalps, almost like a visual display. Now he's tapping. Notice there's a definite rhythmic motion there. This is identifying him as a good suitor. Now although our female came bowling out of that burrow, you can see that she's very receptive. And you can see the blue and the and the violet in her legs. These really are so pretty. And we can see there that he's got the first two set of legs up and he's holding her. There we go. Now he's actually holding her with four legs and his pedipalps, as you can see there, are still flashing away. He's trying to reach underneath her. She is very, very receptive. This is all looking very good at the moment. Here we go, he's reaching under now. There we go, you see how his body is arching, he's reaching under, he's looking for that epigastric furrow. From such a nervous spider we now have a very confident male. It looks like we're just having a little bit of a rest here, this is quite normal for our spiders. Here we go, he's reaching, here we go. That, that would appear to be insemination there, the way he pulled her back. And again there now. Now with the chillabrachis, we find that when the male actually penetrates the female, because his emboli is pointing back towards his body, it's almost like he hooks it into the epigastric furrow, pulls it, and then snatches it free again. And this is where we're seeing her arch over, bending her over backwards. So we can tell by the body movements that we are actually getting a good insemination.
Engage rigid. There we go. That's a good insemination just there. You see the way that flicks back? And again there. You see how he's pulling on her? He's still maintaining that grip. This is a textbook pairing. This is absolutely perfect. And you can see we're resting again now. Very interesting how we had um, a very abrupt start. Our female come tearing out. And then she's, there we go, another perfect insemination. See how he's pulling her back and it snatches. It's almost like that. He literally pulls the emboli clean out of her. Very, very interesting way of pairing. When, we, when you consider we look at things like our Avix, where they literally just sort of, they just penetrate, shake it around a bit, pull it out, do it all again. These guys, and it's quite, quite a forceful act. You see how she's lifting herself now. Here we go. We've got penetration again. Perfect. Now we come round for a different angle now. And we're looking at the, um, the pairing now. We're looking at it from the side using our iPhone. And you can see the iPhone actually picks up the colours in the legs really well. going to try and get a view underneath. You can just about see the pedipalps there. When he starts to move them, they will become more apparent. He's quite happy just to hold her there. See the colouring on the, on the top of the fangs there? There we go. He had penetration again then. See now he's pulling up. This is absolutely perfect. There we go, penetration again. Now you can see how he's pulling her in. And there you go. It's almost like a snatch. He's literally snatching that, that emboli back again. You can see underneath there the emboli working away. So, so far with this particular pairing, we have had multiple um, inseminations. Here we go. You see him reaching right the way under. There we go. We're there. Ooh, you see that? He pulls that through, snatches it through. This is very interesting behaviour. Here we go again. Done it again. Now, you would have literally seen then, very, very quickly, you could see the emboli actually moving away from the pedipalp so it's um where he snatched it through it become very visible now when these guys pair the actual emboli although when the male spider is sitting at ease it looks like it's directly underneath the uh, pedipalp when they pair it comes out to the side there we go insemination again this is very, very good. We can see it from the top now and get a slightly different angle. You can see the way he pulls her through. We've seen no aggression from our female whatsoever. She's been very relaxed through the whole of this. You know, she's got a nice size abdomen there. She's not overweight. They're very elongated, the abdomen, with these chillabrachies. There you go. She's making life a little easier now. Here we go. And you can also see there that he's maintained grip all the way through. 
So he's reaching under, he's looking. There we go. See the pedipalp working underneath. Right. Now he's had enough. And he exits the arena. You can just see that from the front now. And we can see how he actually pushes her away. See how he's coming out from underneath, he's staying low to the floor. Here we go. And he pushes her away and he holds her with them very, very long front legs until he can make a safe exit. Notice how female she is sitting there. She is almost in a daze. This is a good sign. And we just leave them now for as long as it takes for her to move. We don't rush them. We don't disturb them. And she's had enough. Well, it's time to go. Look at that. Back into her burrow. You can see there clearly where the webbing has been torn down. You can also see there's a clean edge around that webbing. Perfect pairing. Well, what did you think to that? There were some really, really nice shots there. And you can really see the actual blue colouring of these spiders and that beautiful violet colour. Same with the male. The males carry the blue as well, but not as strong as the females. The females have got it in the first two sets of their legs. Uh, they also see it on the, I can never say the word, the chasilera uh, from the, like the top of the fangs. Um, and you can see the colouring through the hairs on there as well. I mean, it, they really are a beautiful, beautiful spider. And the males in their own right are really dynamic. They really are nice. You'll see the, um, the pale bands are almost like a peach colour on the males. And along with the very first segment of the leg is that nice dark brown. Then it goes to that peach, then it goes to the brown again. And they just really are a striking, striking spider. Now you would have seen when he hit the enclosure, he literally bounced around like an absolute lunatic. And it took a little while for him to settle down. And then he was just keen to get out of the enclosure. He, he, they always want to go up. Now for a terrestrial spider, it's really interesting how these guys always want to go up, very much like an arboreal spider would. So uh, an interesting sort of part of their behavior, which we've not really noticed before. So it's very much for the males. The males do this. And he behaved exactly the same when we done the, um, when we done the other pairing with him. So this is his second pairing with a second female. We have one more female to try him with as well. And um, fingers crossed, our females have been very, very well behaved and we've seen no aggression whatsoever. Unlike our cayenne kraken, um, our female Kraken absolutely demolishes every male that goes in there. Um, and again, she's a Chilabrachis, in the Chilabrachis family, but she behaves in an entirely different way. So it's going to be an interesting thing to see how, whether, well, for a start, to whether these actual pairings were successful. They looked very, very good. Only time will tell whether we get an egg sack and whether that egg sack is viable. Now, um, once we got him calmed down and he actually met the female, you see she come bowling out of that tunnel and um, she hit him with some force. But the minute that happened, he maintained contact with her. You would have seen there very quickly, he had one foot on her leg and that never stopped. So as she backed off, he moved forward, he maintained contact all the time. And this appears to be something very, very important to them. As long as they can maintain that contact, then things seem to go generally good afterwards. So it's, uh, it's an important thing. And we also saw another different sort of behavior with this pairing in the fact that when the male reaches under and you, you can see him, he's moving away like this with his pedipalps. And then once he finds the epigastric furrow, he literally inserts his, um, oh, what can I say? I've forgotten the word now. He inserts his emboli, which is pointing back. When you look at it on a male and they've got their pedipalps down like this, the emboli sits up like this. So when he's looking for her, he goes forward, the emboli turns it so it's sideways, and the emboli is pointing back towards him. So he's literally trying to hook that into her epigastric furrow. And you'll see with these guys, 
whenever he managed to hook her in, you see her body turn down as he's pulling her towards him, and then he snatches it through. And this is something we've not seen before with, with other pairings. So it's a really, really interesting behavior. And he's done it time and time again. We saw it one time after the other, again and again. Really, really interesting behavior. So it's really cool. Now, another thing that um, we made a mention of was the entrance to her tunnel. You would have noticed there that it was all webbed up. Now, you'll often hear me commenting about different types of webbing. The web tells a story all of its own. So whether your spider is literally just resting, whether it's laid out a carpet mat of webbing, whether it's got a web curtain behind a piece of bark or anything like this, they are all done in slightly different ways. And if you concentrate and have a look at the webbing, try and keep a visual reminder, maybe take a photograph, and then you'll see the different types of webbing that they use for different purposes. Now, as we said in the video, that was only lightly covered. But to some, you might well have looked at that and thought, hmm, perhaps she's locked herself away. She's getting ready for a molt. Maybe she's in pre-molt. It's not the case. If she'd been in, in that burrow getting ready to um, molt out, that webbing across the entrance to the burrow would have been a thick white mat. It would have, you wouldn't have been able to see through it quite so easy. So it gives away the intention of the spider and what it's actually doing. So we knew that even though looking in there, we knew that the although the entrance was covered up with web, we knew that, that literally that type of webbing is put there just purely to protect the entrance of the burrow against intruders. It stops things wandering down in there while she's asleep during the daytime. So it's... Um, it's a basically, it's a case of sort of like closing the door, if you like, but it's not permanently shut. Right. Well, I hope that made a little bit of sense, and I hope you enjoyed the footage. They really are truly wonderful spiders. And uh, fingers crossed, we will get some viable egg sacs, and then hopefully we'll have some lovely, lovely slings to show you later on. Right. Well, I hope that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, got a few tips along the way. And um, don't forget, please hit the like button. If you've watched the video and you enjoyed it, hit the like button. We see on our thing there that we can have, um, I don't know, we, we might have 10,000 views, but there's only 200 likes. So what are we all doing? Hit the like button. It really, really does help the channel. It shows YouTube that you're really enjoying the content. And that way it will push it up a little bit more and more people will hopefully get to see it. And uh, so we really appreciate that. Does us the world of good. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.